Okay, uh, so today uh, I have a little DIY project that I'm gonna be working on. Uh, so uh, I had done this mod uh, to this monitor. Uh, these are one of those uh, monitors that you put in the in the back uh, headrest of uh, of uh, car seats. So uh, I added uh, these uh, outputs, uh, or sorry, th these inputs. Uh, so that you could pretty much hook up any type of uh, composite signal into the monitor. Now the monitor does have uh, an in, and then uh, and that's it, it's right there. Problem with this one is that for the life of me, I've been looking for, I've tried many different cables, and it always ends up being just a mono signal that I get out of any kind of TV or any any type of DVD player or any type of video game console that I try to plug in. I just always get a, a mono signal. When I did this mod, uh, I was finally able to get a stereo output uh, through these little speakers that the monitor has. So that's another reason why I did this mod. Uh, the mod was basically done with me uh, basically uh, soldering leads uh, to this um, input and then channeling uh, the signal uh, onto these uh, composite jacks. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and, and do it on a different uh, monitor. Uh, this is actually an, a bigger monitor and it's so this is the monitor that I'll be modding today. I have already uh, taken it apart it's a bit bigger than the other uh, monitor that I already did. And uh, so as you can see, uh, here's the little board. And then here are the speakers down here. Here are the speakers. And uh, the jack is basically the same one because it's basically another Philips uh, screen. It's just a little bit bigger. So I will be hacking basically this input and I'll be soldering uh, leads uh that are from this jack and then i will go ahead and channel them so that way we can figure out how to get uh, a composite signal and an audio out signal audio in signal so uh that is the project for today so basically i've soldered on all the wires that i'm gonna need uh, all the leads that i'm gonna need uh, in order to solder onto these little uh AVI or AV uh, ports. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and try the first two wires to see if I can get a video signal and then we'll start sorting out the other ones. All right, so it appears that I made a mistake. It's actually not the green cables here, but it's actually we got the orange uh, striped cable and the blue cable, the blue cable being the ground. Uh, so that cable right there will be giving me the uh, yellow composite signal so I'm just gonna show you really quick there right there is the screen so uh, presumably now we just have to find uh, the sound uh, which could be uh, if I had to make my best guess I'm thinking that this is probably a ground and this is gonna be for the left and the right signal so uh, let's go ahead and try to see if I can get um, some sound out of this. So it looks like I, I right now I only have the left channel on, but it looks like the speaker. Sorry, I got the right channel on. But right now the speaker is um, is not properly hooked up because I only have it. Uh, uh, making with the wire making contact to the po to the input but uh, looks to me like well this is uh, up and running and I have this uh, wired without using that cable so now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to figure out how to drill some holes on the side so we can put the input jacks and make sure that we don't uh, touch the, the shielding for the screen because that could short out the sound in the video so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that now so before I, I start drilling holes uh, for the uh, input jacks, I just want to kind of go over the, the little uh, diagram if you intend on doing this type of hack on these type of little screens. So uh, so this first pin here uh, towards your left is going to be the video. So I've marked it here, video. 
Uh, this is going to be uh, helpful just in case you want to know where to get the signal. Uh, this middle wire right here is the ground, and it's the ground for all of them, as I discovered. So I marked this as just ground or video ground that I wrote right there. Uh, so the lead going all the way into the uh, into the plug, it, this is the right speaker. Uh, I did have another lead here, but I decided to take it off because uh, it wasn't necessary because they both give off the same signal. Neither one of these is a ground. And then uh, this wire right here would be the left uh, speaker, which I've already marked here, left speaker. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna start uh, uh, shielding some of this and then uh, reassemble uh, the board and then figure out where I'm gonna put those holes. All right, so one of the lessons that I learned uh, from the last time that I tried this project is that um, these posts uh, for the input jacks uh, really have to go as far back into, into the backing of the TV as you can, uh, because if you leave it too much, too close to the lid, uh, you'll, you won't have the lid close all the way. Uh, this happened to me and at first it wouldn't even close all the way. So what I ended up having to do is to, uh, ground, ground down, uh, the post just a little bit so that this top piece could fit a little bit better. And, and it eventually it did, uh, but it would have been nice to have this completely flush. Not that you can notice a lot, but, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put the posts in the same place, except that this, these are going to go on the, on the left side. So, uh, what I've done is I went ahead and, uh, got the back of the TV and I already made, uh, my tape where I'm going to make the holes. Um, and I tried my very best to make the post as far back as I could. Um, so the good thing is that this is a lot bigger, a lot wider. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit more room so to fit the post comfortably. Uh, the other thing that I have to watch out to is uh, this metal shielding that the TV screen has. If the posts make any kind of contact with this, it could short out the signal. So I'm going to have to figure out how to shield the posts so that way when I assemble everything back, even if the posts touch these, they have, they'll be shielded so there won't be any interference uh, with this back plate. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, drilling the holes. Okay, so here we have the uh, composite jacks already installed. The black will be the video, uh, the white will be the left channel, and the orange will be uh, the right channel. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have a yellow jack, uh, but I think I, I can remember that this one goes on on the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, first I'm going to start off by uh, installing a ground wire. Uh, I'm going to link it to this one, this one, and this one, and then we'll, we'll install the, the ground from the circuit board. And then we'll install the signals here and hopefully, uh, it'll close properly. Uh, I think the only thing that I'm worried about is making sure that these posts do not touch that shielding on that, on that screen, which I'll have to uh, figure out in a little while. Uh, I think it'll, it'll close just fine. Um, I can show you that in a minute. So as you can see, uh, these will probably be able to close all the way. Uh, of course, I have not uh, tried to close it all the way yet. Uh, if this little uh, piece of plastic gets in the way, I'll just uh, trim it off. Uh, but I think it'll it'll completely shut. Um, I don't think that the posts are going to be in the way of that. So uh, go ahead and start uh, doing that ground wire. Okay, so uh, we mostly have this complete. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a couple of dabs of hot glue on these leads uh, just to protect them from any shorting. Uh, the ground wire I'm not too worried about, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start uh, dropping some hot glue just on these little parts right here so that we, we can make sure that there's no contact with that shielding from the back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So right now I have uh, the my DVD VCR uh, playing straight into the little portable TV, and those are the two the new uh, composite ports. 
So this would be quite useful. Um, I have this. Uh, I have the other one hooked up to the uh, car uh, with a converter, and I also have my PS2 in there. So uh, it'd be nice to be able to play PS2 without having to do a series of uh, adapters uh, to get this to work. I can just plug in the composite cable straight into the little TV, and on top of everything else, now I'm getting that stereo output from the two speakers. So that's also uh, very nice. Um, so uh, I think this uh, mod is, is a success. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my car and uh, I'll show you uh, how it works with the PS2. Okay, so we got the PS2 Slim hooked up with one of my favorite games, which would be Scarface, the world is yours. Very underrated, one of my favorite uh, games of all time. And as you can see, I'm playing it on my in my car, and uh, it's working fine. So this would be perfect uh, if I'm going on a long trip and my wife so happened to volunteer to drive. I can definitely kick back for a little while and play some PS2. Uh, this is definitely helpful too to test test out games uh, that I'm probably thinking of buying or picking up at yard sales or something like that. So, but that's basically it. Um, the setup is, you know, pretty basic. I got the PS3 Slim here, you know, PlayStation controller. I could probably even put a movie in here and uh, watch that if I wanted to. So, anyhow. Uh, the picture's not great. I mean, it's one of these very old LCD type of uh, screens, but I mean, the mod I think really is a nice thing to have just so that you can uh, uh, play in the car or play on the go if you'd like. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you for joining me for today, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you found this DIY. Uh, helpful. Thank you.